What's up everyone and welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. Today on the table we are in the second match from the top four of the 2017 Game of Thrones of Card Games 2nd Edition Originals held in Rochester, New York at Millennium Games. On the left we have Philip. on the right we have James. Philip, we've seen, I think, in the series already. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a voiceover for one of these matches. Uh, but he is from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. And on the right, James Booker, I believe, is from the Ohio area. Both players traveling a little distance here to get to uh, upstate New York. And on the left, we have uh, Philip playing Night's Watch, Reigns of Castamere. An unusual combination, and on the right we have uh, Reigns of Casimir deck, but it's the usual one, Lannister. And we got First Snow on the Lannister side, flipped as a plot, and Late Summer Feast. All right. All right. So the nice watch player looking to get lots of economy, doesn't care about his opponent drawing any cards. Maybe he's not even going to do any challenges, doesn't care. Maybe he's just looking to block unopposed. The usual wall defensive stuff, we'll find out shortly, I'm sure. It looks like we got Chella and a uh, Eerie on setup on the other side. Eerie, an interesting choice. You can kneel out at the start of a phase and basically save a character, make him cannot be killed. Great for uh, saving someone from Valor happening before the plots uh, get chosen or in the challenge phase. But you gotta be careful, you choose someone that can't be killed. You don't want to choose someone that has dupes on them because you won't be able to choose them to be killed and then pop a dupe to save them. You might have to kill someone else you don't want to kill. So you gotta use it wisely. You could also use it on your opponent's characters, which I think is fun to like choose one of their chuds to not be killed so they have to kill someone more important. I, I think that's my favorite use for it. So it looks like on the Night's Watch side we have Halder set up there. A, uh, I think it's Gren, uh, the, far, the far character there. And we got the usual Steward at the Wall and a Messenger Raven. No locations though yet, which is interesting. Must be all sitting in his hand. So it looks like we're waiting for James Booker here on the right. Uh, this was cut from the live stream we did that day. Uh, so it was a two-day event. The Swiss was on the second day. We had a live stream and a melee event going on at the same time. So I do have melee videos coming. So make sure you subscribe, hit the like button on these Thrones videos to show your appreciation for them. And uh, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table. The link is in the description below. Help support these videos. Much appreciated, all the support. Even just you viewing this, that's amazing. Thank you, guys. Uh, but yeah, James Booker uh, on the right, the bad guy, quote unquote, one of the bad guys of, uh, of our Thrones game here, using his Donald Trump mat. Since then, I, I'm not sure if he's going to keep doing that. Uh, I think he's turned around on Facebook there and uh, decided not to go that route and promoting the politics in, uh, in Thrones. Even though, like, I think it's half a joke, but I'm, I'm not sure. You know, you're never sure, but... Valerian Steel Dagger. So we got that Lancer attachment, Valerian Steel Dagger. Basically gives a character stealth during an intrigue challenge. And that's all we're getting out of that. That is very interesting. So since he opened first snow, he's looking to send, I guess, a bunch of characters back to hand, clear the Night's Watch player's board. And I, I, I don't know. I Maybe he thought he would draw into some economy and didn't. And he wasn't able to play another four-cost character. Since he only have three gold from the plot. This is a little risky because if the Night's Watch player is playing March to the Wall... Uh, that shell is going to go bye-bye. At least the attachment will go back to hand. I believe it's non-terminal, so... He'll be alright there, but... And he can always use Eerie to choose Chella not to be killed. So she'll stick around from that, but... I'd be more worried about the March to the Wall. And since it's first snow, low reserve, we're going to see some hand discarding happening. On both sides, actually, very low reserve. So maybe that was the... Uh, maybe that first snow is not too bad of a call. We'll see here. So looks like we got five costs. Cotter Pike in play, so he's going to stick around. I think it's Gren on the far side. I'll check right now. Uh, yeah, it is Gren. Uh, he's three strength, though, and uh, three costs. So three costs is going to send him back to hand for first snow. Military icon only has got a reaction after you win a challenge in which Gren is attacking. Move one power from the losing opponent's faction card to another attacking Night's Watch character. Up to two power instead if that character's standing. And we got Craster on the board. So due to the nine gold plot, he's got a Rose Road out now to help him next round. But the nine gold plot helped him get a couple characters in there to stick around. So already he's looking better off than James. But we do have the Eerie Nelt. So Chella cannot be chosen to be killed. So military is not going to matter. He can go a little more aggressive. He can also stealth on the Intrigue. One of those characters. But since Chella is only three strength, 
I don't think that attachment gives any strength buff. I could be wrong, but I don't think it does. Uh, the Intrigue Challenge is not going to make it through either. But that's okay. You want uh, the Night's Watch player to win some challenges, so you can trigger the Forced Reaction off of uh, uh, Summer Harvest there, or whatever it's called. Late Summer Feast. Late Summer Feast. My bad. And with the Intrigue Strength of 9 on the Night's Watch side, and only 3 across the table, uh, we may see a range trigger here. I don't know what the trigger is you'd want to be triggering. I don't even know what Night's Watch has in their scheme deck. I'm sure a bunch of them are the same as any any uh, scheme deck for a, a range deck, but I'm not sure the tricks to this deck. Well, that's interesting. I remember seeing uh, Philip at the regional, and, and when I saw what he was playing, I just was I, I was blown away. Blown away. I don't know if this is a hidden thing, or I, I still don't hear people talk about it. I hear people talking about the Night's Watch Kings of Summer, the Builder deck, but I don't hear anything about Night's Watch Reigns. So I think it's a very interesting, very interesting combo of uh, faction and agenda here, and uh, it's got him to the top four. But can it get him to the finals? Can it get him the title? You have to watch to find out. So go watch the other game. The other top four games are already up on the channel. Uh, so you can see who won that game and you'll know who is uh, going to face the winner of this game. And uh, obviously both winners will face off in the finals coming up on the channel. So like I said before, subscribe. And right beside that subscribe button, if you've already subscribed and you haven't done so, hit that little alarm bell button. Uh, that will notify you anytime a video goes up, uh, no matter what. You may get notifications randomly from random people you subscribe to. Uh, but I don't know how Google slash YouTube decides that. But uh, if you click the alarm bell button, you should get majority, if not all, of the notifications when a new video goes up. Uh, or we do a live stream and we go live if you don't want to miss those. So. Yeah, I guess true. Yeah, yeah, there's that too. I'll get more cards. Well, I'm not, <laughs> so, upset. I'm not uh, so upset about that though. Amazing. You don't like your cards. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so it looks like James is in a tough spot here. He's sitting in the top four. You know you make some goof ups here. In this first round, this could be the end of your day in the tournament. Uh, so he's trying to play real careful here. He, I don't know if he's got himself in a tight spot. He's trying to think probably what's in his opponent's scheme plot, what challenge he wants to do. Does he want to just pass and try to try to stop something? But he probably won't. He might get an unopposed challenge here. If you get a military off, you could kill someone, but Cotter Pike will defend. But then at least if he defends, then you don't have to worry about enough intrigue coming back and getting a range trigger off I, I would I would force the pressure especially since the Eerie's knelt and you can't stop the range trigger anyway then again both players have loads of cards in hand so they, I'm sure they don't care about losing intrigue right now so there we go <laughs> Philip reminds his opponent he may draw a card he does not have to but they triggered a deed it away and he does draw a card Trying to go for card quality, get as many cards in your hand as you can, and uh, pick all the best ones going to the next round. And we get another card drawn here, so two cards drawn off of the plot of his opponent. Looks like no range trigger here. Look at all these cards, wow. Alright, so we know he's got the uh, things I do for love. So we can pay some gold to send a character back to hand here. <laughs> Did you make it yourself? No, no, they, they, they print it, they print it, yeah. Uh, I'm done for my challenges. Alright, Dom's one for you. Then I need to discard five cards. Yes. I gotta give you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three. So it sounds like three cards have to be chucked on the Lancer side, five cards have to be chucked on the Night's Watch side for taxation due to their reserve limits. <laughs> Pretty crazy. So Cotter Pike's still around. He is a good character, I think, for Night's Watch. Five for five. 
He's got that um, two icons, military and intrigue. And he's also got that stealth keyword, which I think is pretty huge on defense or offense. I think this deck is more of an offensive deck, so it makes sense. And him having that intrigue with stealth is huge in a range deck. As we see James doing the same thing across the board with intrigue and try to throw stealth on using an attachment. Which I think is smart. Just another avenue to make sure you get those intrigue challenges off. Winning by five or more and be able to trigger your agenda when you feel like it. And Craster sitting out there. We all know Craster, he's immune to Omen card effects, so he's basically, for Valor, he doesn't doesn't get killed by Valor. Uh, and he's got that action, Sacrifice Craster, to put each character that was killed this phase into play from its owner's dead pile. So he can kind of undo a Valor, is, is, what, uh, is what he's used for, I guess. Although I guess you could be in those scenarios against like Cal Drogo or an aggressive kill deck, maybe the Mountain or whatnot, where you maybe you get hit pretty heavy, and or even like one of those Lannister with Cersei and the two claim the Corset Cersei doing some trial by combat business, uh, and the Mountain too. You never know where you lose like you know three or four characters in a turn, some that you didn't want to lose, obviously, and uh, Craster might be the good play in that situation to get them back in there. But then again, he's a trigger, and uh, against Lannister, they have this card, uh, uh, what's it called again? Cancel something? I forget, anyways. No, I'm just joking. It's Treachery. Everyone knows Treachery. And that can cancel that action and undo uh, undo Craster's ability, but it will sacrifice him still. He'll have to pay that cost and go to the discard pile, so he's a, he's a gambling card for sure. It's, it's high risk on it, but uh, the reward can pay off nicely. All right, so we got here to serve on the uh, Night's Watch side. He'll probably go get, uh, get uh, Maester Eamon. I'm trying to remember the name of the Maester there, but the one that saves Night's Watch characters. And on the other side, we got Noble Cause. So an econ plot, obviously. Looking to get uh, get that board filled up with some actual Lannister characters here. Chella's not going to be able to do it alone. Eerie or no eerie. So Maester Eamon's in there. He's going to help keep keep the board around there. Saving Night's Watch characters uh, by kneeling himself. And I think we do see the wall in uh, Philip's hand there. So he's going to be able to play that wall um, this turn if he wants, because he does have three gold from the plot, one from the Rose Road. But I think the Lancer player is marshalling first here. He's got five gold to work with. He has that Lord slash Lady reduction off Noble Cause to reduce the first Lord or Lady plays by two. <laughs> but even though he doesn't have, two, yeah, I guess he has quite a few cards in hand now. Maybe after drawing, but uh, he knows what he picked after last turn. He got two new cards, so he's maybe has has some choices now, and it's not a clear path for him. That's it. That's a pass. Sometimes you draw into Lords or Ladies. Sometimes you draw. Oh, he played Noble Cause hoping to get a Lord or Lady. He said sometimes he draws into him, sometimes he don't. And maybe he didn't. Or maybe he's bluffing. Maybe he wants to go to the Hound play. Yeah, it's not a great start here. For the Lancer player, James. And with Craster across the board, Valor might not be the best, best option to help get him back in it here. So we got Gren back in play, a uh, Steward at the Wall, and that Messenger Raven are back. So we're back again to a nice wide board on the Night's Watch side. So Eerie knelt at the start of challenges to keep Cello around, cannot be killed. And we got a second Rose Road there now on the Night's Watch side, so he's drawn into some more economy. I'm sure the Lancer player wishes he could say the same. But not only is he not seeing his economy, he's not using his economy plot to his advantage. So I think he's fallen behind that department. I mean, even if he uses that gold to just get a couple burn men in play, it's, it's, he's still in a bad spot. 
Even the Hound. The Hound might come into play and then go back to hand, so it's not not really efficient gold spent here in the early game to build up your board, but we'll see what tricks he has up his sleeve. I just want to say uh, I have a great appreciation for all these guys playing on stream, no one putting up a fuss, everyone willing to play on camera, on the stream that day. I just want to say thank you to all the players who didn't give any kind of fuss, uh, you know, not wanting to play on camera. So I appreciate that very much. And I'm sure you guys do out there too. So be nice to players who play on camera, okay? That's all I got to say. Intrigue of six. So intrigue challenge of six here with Eamon and Craster. So Eamon's not going to be used to save anyone. I guess he doesn't need to at this point. And we've got Chella coming in on the defense. So blocking the range trigger business here. Blocking the unopposed power bonus, but still going to lose a card to claim. And it was a trial by combat. And a military of eight stealthing Chella. So a military eight stealthing Chella, Chella, sorry, who does not have stealth, is what I'm trying to say there, uh, on the military challenge. Only on intrigue. Only on intrigue. So here's where we'll see if that gold is spent to bring a burn man in. And the problem is when you bring the burn man in, if you can't win this, which the hound or the burn man will not win this. Uh, they'll have to be claimed because you can't choose Chella. So at this point, if Chella just sits out there by herself, um, she can't be chosen, so nobody has to die for claim. But if he, he really wants to block that unopposed, uh, he can do so. Just checking the character's text boxes there to see if there's any, any trickery uh, from them winning unopposed or anything. Now we got the Hound in play after the military challenge. I'm not sure why James took a power off his house. Oh, sorry, yes, from Gren, right? I think it's Gren. We already read this. Yeah, yeah, after you win a challenge, when she's Gren's attack, you move one power from the losing opponent's faction card to an attacking nice watch character. So he threw it on Cotter. That's what happened there. My bad. And it looks like the Hound won some dominance, so he's gotten a power from the Lancer player. So, nice watch player up 3 to 1. We got counting coppers on the Lannister side into confiscation on the Night's Watch side, getting rid of that uh, Valerian Steel Dagger. Looks like the Night's Watch player won initiative again, has now made the Lannister player go first again. Pretty sure. Yeah, it looks like it is. I've got a plan for him. <laughs> I've got a plan. Uh -huh. So James needs to find a milk of the poppy for that craster. I think that's the answer here. I don't know if he's drawn into it or not, but he's definitely digging for an answer for him for sure. Says he has a plan for him, but... Is it called milk? <laughs> and it's a great haul. That's not a milk, but... It's a great haul. Yeah, I don't. He's got. He needs a way to save a gold to go around to the plot phase so he can nightmares faster. But you don't even have the chance to in second edition. In first edition, there used to be a little action window before plots are revealed, and you can do stuff like that. But 
Now it just has to be an interrupt to the phase beginning, and that's not what Nightmares is. So I think a Milk of the Poppy is the only answer here. Maybe a gold for a Treachery actually would help. But uh, I think there's a location in Lancer that you can save a gold on the on the location, but then I think it's like an action to trigger it to get it off. So that would be, I think, doable in the taxation action window. You could do that, but I could be totally wrong. I may be getting confused with the first edition card. It's obviously a not a highly played Lancer card for sure. All right, so we've got Castle Black on the board. So we've seen floods of characters. Now we're starting to see locations, which is not usually the way you see it in a Night's Watch deck. Uh, obviously, Reigns of Castamere is not the usual Night's Watch deck, I'm sure. But we do have the wall in play now. A load of characters. I do not see any power icons, though. And no little tricks to give any power icons at this this point. So we just triggered the Eerie. I'm not sure who it was on. Probably Chella. We got an unopposed power challenge. The wall is going to go down. No, no trigger on the wall this turn. Of course, Reaction is going to send the Hound back. He's got 10 reserves, so might as well throw him in there. I guess he's not worried about March the Wall at this point. I think we would have seen it by now. I'm sure he has his own March the Wall that he's... Uh, He's playing for a snow that he's probably worried about using at this point. <laughs> Marsh the Wall is one of those plots that, like, it's kind of win more, I think, that, you know, you're sitting in a good spot already. It's kind of like just to put the nail in the coffin usually is how you use it. But, I mean, man, if you're not in that situation to use it and you're falling behind, that is the last plot you want to flip to basically, you know, get rid of an opponent's Chud or Messenger Raven or something, like little one-cost weenie, and you're knocking out a character that you struggle to get on the board and keep on the board. So kids, be careful with those marks to the walls out there. Intrigue of eight. So Intrigue Challenge, Craster, Eamon, eight strength, you're all both plus one from the wall. So we're getting a range trigger here, let's see what we got. First range trigger of the game. And he's copying and counting coppers, of course, using Varus's riddle. And just fill up his hand again. So Philip dominating this game, definitely in control, playing it very calm and cool. He's one of the better players that I've played against over the years. Uh, I played against him back in like my first year of playing Thrones, I believe. Uh, we met in Kingston, uh, playing at a regional. Brought uh, I think four or five players with me up from the Hamilton area. Drove up to Kingston, and a bunch of Montreal players came down from the Montreal area. Some Ottawa area players like uh, uh, John Andrews, aka Dark Nosh from Beyond the Wall, met him. Uh, before that, but yeah, saw him there at the, at that regional. That was where I met a bunch of these Montrealer guys. Uh, and since then, uh, I've been convention slash regional friends with them ever since. Uh, I love seeing those guys playing with those guys. But yeah, Philip, Philip, I think is my favorite Montreal area player. He's my buddy. Uh, always so kind and courteous, and a very good player. But always have fun playing with him. Uh, yeah, great guy. So inside, I'm rooting for him, actually, in this scenario. <laughs> yeah, that's right, James. <laughs> so after that round, we're up to four power on the Night's Watch side, two on the Lancer side. So still, uh, still early in the game here uh, in the power totals. And it looks like we got traded with a Matoshi on the Lancer side. He's looking to get some characters on the board. And then we have that uh, Night's Watch plot where they're all sitting around the fire. The fire that burns, I think is what it's called. And it's a 4-6-0, reserve 7, plot deck limit 1. It's the winter trait. Each Night's Watch character you control does not kneel when declared as a defender. It's from their expansion box or watchers on the wall. Very gross plot. I remember seeing that plot when I first opened the Night's Watch box and was like, what the hell? That's the last thing they need is another easily easily uh, defendable turn where they can trigger the wall or they don't have to kneel to defend. It's a little gross. But it helps them, like, get, you know, they can do some challenges back after that. And with the six reserve, uh, or six initiative, sorry. Six initiative is what kills me because that's pretty high initiative. You can 
usually choose your opponent to go first and you know just defend 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 and then you have your whole board standing and then you can even attack uh, with all your characters which is great great night's watch plot though so another econ plot played by a lancer player let's see if we can put it to work here with that great hall and uh build up a decent board that uh wow okay jack and hagar is in the deck and he's going to throw Valar Morghulis tokens on up to three unique characters. And uh, if he wins a challenge attacking alone, he can, uh, as a reaction, choose and kill one of those characters uh, on top of claim. So it's in the reaction window, so he could kill a character in a military challenge as a reaction, then the opponent has to suffer claim after that. So, so up to three unique characters. Uh, and there's a few, so he's got some choices. So aim in with the dupe. That makes sense. Can th shred through some dupes. <laughs> and you, like with Eamon out there, though, it's tough. Eamon's got a dupe. Plus, Eamon can save from this ability. I believe it's uh, there's no issue of cannot be saved. So you can definitely save from it. So it's a good way to chew through dupes. But Eamon can save the one guy that gets triggered. But. Jacken's got to win the challenge attacking alone first. That's the key. Maybe you can get a Valerian Steel Dagger on him and then uh, have some stealth, but... Might be tough winning against a Night's Watch deck that has Castle Black and the Wall giving the one strength buff across the table. It might be a little tough to get that through, but right now power is the key. Power Icons is where the Night's Watch player is uh, weak. So that's, that's where Jacken will probably strike. But we'll see what happens after marshalling here. Still have the Night's Watch player to marshal some cards. Still got lots of money on the Lancer side. Even after he just played a 7 coster. Tons of cards in his hand, but does he have what he needs to come back? He's got to get some more cards on the board. He's got a 5 reserve plot. He's going to be dumping a bunch in taxation. Wish I was a Greyjoy player across the board from uh, James in this match. Uh, get that uh, that market uh, location that needs 8 in your opponent's discard pile. Definitely uh, would be popping off tons of gold in this match. And that's it. He's going to pass. We know he's got the Hound in hand. So saving gold for that. He may have some other tricks. Maybe looking to get off uh, you know, the usual tiers or put to the sword business. But uh, lots of intrigue icons across the table is going to help keep those tiers held in the hand of Lancer player. I mean, he could get one off on Gren. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. Craven. Craven on uh, Jack and Hagar uh, is going to stop him from attacking at all. Oh, man. I am starting to feel bad for James in this uh, matchup. A little bit. Not too much, but a little bit. Then we got Thorin Smallwood on the board. Mr. Raven's back. And I think saving two gold. So I think we got like seven gold saved on the other side. No, I think we got like five. Five gold saved on the Lancer side. I'm pretty sure if I'm doing my math right. So the Eerie has been triggered. Choosing uh, Jack and Agar. He's not going to go anywhere. Can't be killed for claim. Hopefully James playing Confiscation in his plot deck and can get that Craven off there. But with all this draw from these Messenger Ravens and that Varus Riddle copying the Count of Coppers, uh, I'm sure it's not long before uh, Philip draws into another... Another Craven. Or a Milk. Valar Morghulis tokens aren't doing anything anytime soon. No kneeling to defend. He's probably thinking through his uh, his hound player, what he's going to use his money for. I'm not sure what attachment has gone on Cotter Pike there. Doesn't have a big text box, so I don't think it's Ghost. Is it a practice blade? Uh, could be 
long claw actually. Go on a nice watch character, two cost. Attach character gets plus one strength and gains renown. So I can see that. He's already got power on Cotter there. Can uh, help get him more power there. So unopposed power challenge. Taking down the wall with the hound. Four power now on the Lancer side. And I think only four on the Night's Watch side, so he's keeping in this game. Does he want to keep the Hound on the board? That's the real question. He doesn't have enough money to get him back into play unless he's got, like, a uh, Lancer event here. I think it's... They hear me roar. You can pay a buck, throw a guy into play, but... I don't think that's what James is playing. Don't think this is the Laney Jumper style deck. Tough decision here. Does he keep him in play or does he put him back in hand? Five reserve on his plot, I believe. Here he is working through taxation already, thinking what he's going to keep in his hand after he discards down to five. And does the hound fit into that math or does he need to keep the hound on the board? Yep, he's going to choose to lose a card, keep the Hound on the board. And he loses a Bodyguard. No Lords. Yeah, yeah as they no said, no lords. lords, no Ladies, no one to play that on. Um, I guess I could try to Leroy Jenkins one here. Uh, but, I will... There you go. Yeah, this is good defense. <laughs> and, yeah, Phillips just pointed out he wouldn't have to kneel for defense, so no point in doing another challenge. With Chella, who would just be fully blocked for sure. Now let's see uh, the Night's Watch player put some offensive pressure here on the Lancer player and shoot up in power totals here. Intrigue for 11, stealth in Jack and Agar. So Intrigue, 11 strength, Jack and the target for stealth. Shell is going to just block the unopposed. And here we got another range trigger. This is just going to be the kneel on Jack and. No, it's going to be a stand plot. And try to speed up his game here. Oh, you replace it. Yeah. So now there's claim. <laughs> James thought there was no claim because it was a zero claim plot, but he's now covered it up. So he did the right thing, started with intrigue, got rid of that no claim negative on that plot, and is now able to do some real damage. Then military with those two. So he stealth stood Cotter Pike. Pike. He's got him in there now with Gren. He's doing a military stealth and jacking. So he's going to be able to steal a power using Gren's ability. Cotter, I think, has renown. Reaction, I'll take you from yep. one from your house. I think you already removed it. I'm sorry? I think you already removed it. Yeah, uh, I got the last challenge? Uh, I didn't do it. Okay, oh, okay, so I took one off. Alright, yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, well, it's for you. Thanks, thanks, yeah. Sorry to be such a terrible... Oh, player. I see. He accidentally took another power off for Gren, but they corrected it there. So he just took off one for Gren right now. It's gone on to Cotter Pike. And Renown on to Cotter. So Cotter Pike, I think, is in with four or five power. It's got five power on him. Three on the house guard. So with eight power now on the Night's Watch side. And ten strength on the Night's Watch side will get him dominance. Messenger Raven goes back to hand, draws a card. And now we got to see Taxation hit James's hand again here. Filling up that discard pile. That's tough. I think he's got to get rid of three cards. Even after keeping the Hound in play, losing Intrigue, and uh, yeah, losing to the, a card to the Hound's ability, uh, keeping him in play too. Still had quite a huge hand. And how many more Econ plots will he have? Probably not many. 
He's probably got Valor and March to the Wall still coming, which aren't going to be good for him. He's got to get rid of the dupe off Eamon, because Cotter can be saved. Eamon will do his ability, and then Eamon can save himself. Basically have, I think, two chances then to keep Cotter in play for Valors. Even if you can get Cotter out of play, then Craster triggered after, you get rid of that five power off Cotter. So I'm sure what James wants to do. He's got the dupe on Craster. Craster's going to stick around for a while, too. So slowly, as this game continues to go on, the Nice Watch player just building a, uh, a very gross board. He's going to get his locations, just keeps solidifying his win here. Or his lead is what I want to say. But uh, at this point, it does not look good for the Lancer player at all. And now the Lancer player has to flip his Valar Morghulis into Call in the Banners. So Call in the Banners goes off first, get a couple gold there. And now we're going to have the Valor go off. So saves first. So we got a save on Eamon. Craster's immune to it. And save on Cotter from Eamon. No gold to cancel that with Treachery. Will he even use Craster's ability? He's got a dupe on him. You don't want to just throw him away and chuck the dupe. And it would bring bring back the Hound and Chella, and I guess you don't want to do that either. So I think Phillip's all right with uh, that play there. I'm not using Craster right now. Another dupe for Eamon. Obviously, Erie was used at the start of plot phase to save Jack and Agar. So now Ghost on Cotter Pike. So a save, basically, if Cotter's uh, killed, he can return Ghost back to his hand to save him. And I forget the name of that guy. Satin? Satin? He's a steward, no attachment except weapon. He's got two costs, one strength, intrigue. And uh, no attachment except weapon, obviously. Reaction after Satin is knelt, or Satin. Choose a choose and stand another steward character. Limit twice per phase. <laughs> yeah. And Maester Eamon's a steward. So we might see Eamon stood here and used to uh, save another Night's Watch character. So obviously the Nice Watch player chose himself to go first so he could trigger his plot ability, get a couple extra gold, but now he's going to have to go first in the challenge phase. He does have claim though, and the Lancer player does not. The Lancer player is playing Valor and doesn't mind having that zero claim because usually, usually he'd be able to have enough intrigue on the board to get a range trigger through and be able to flip out of it and get some claim. Just like we saw the Night's Watch player do on his zero claim plot, uh, the fire that burns. But when you're playing from behind and you're, you're betting on getting those plots out of your scheme deck, that's the risk of reigns. If you can't get those intrigues off and not trigger those reigns, your gen is pretty much doing nothing for you. And you've built your deck around it, and you know your strength is usually intrigue, but you know your weaknesses are everything else. And if those intrigues aren't really helping you win that game, then uh, yeah, you're in a tough spot. But yeah, if those reigns triggers are going off, uh, yeah, it's disgusting you being able to ma manipulate the plot deck and, and change that kind of thing, but... Uh, yeah, it's a high payoff, but uh, can be very punishing if it uh, blows up in your face. Like many things in this game, actually. And that's the beauty of this game. You can go uh, heavy in one area, you know, focus your deck on a certain thing, but uh, if your opponent's ready for that, and uh, basically has a counter to that, you it just blows up in your face. So. <laughs> Sometimes jack all trades is the way to go, but... It's just like combo style decks too. There's lots of cool little combos you can put together. Multiple cards that have great synergies, but drawn from a 60 card deck, high variance, not a lot to draw in the game at this point. And uh, that can also blow up in your face when you're trying to see multiple cards hit the table together at the same time, or have them all in your hand while you have certain things happening on the table and your opponent's not disrupting your plan. 
Uh, but when you're playing seven or eight games in a tournament, trying to see that all happen off a 60-card deck can be risky too. So It's awesome, though, the amount of options you have for deck building in this game, where you can do basically whatever the hell you want. Lots of competitive options in every, ha in every faction, I think. And, uh, yeah, seeing lots of creative decks popping up all over the place and winning, and I like it. Obviously, the player plays a big role in that. Don't forget that factor. So while you're waiting for uh, for decisions here, guys, hit that like button. Please, please, please hit that like button. Helps other people find these videos. Helps other people find this game, I'm sure. Uh, bump into it, and then, you know, maybe start asking the questions. Maybe we'll get some new players join the game. Build the game, grow the game. So it's what uh, the main focus behind doing these videos, of course. Spread the word. Help the fans of the game uh, watch other players play. Help newer players be able to watch other players play before they show up at tournaments. Kind of know what they're walking into. Kind of help them prepare. That's what these videos are for. So if you got some people that are interested in the game or are new at the game or trying to learn the game, send them some of these videos and, and show them what... Uh, what unquote high level play uh, is like here in, in Game of Thrones. Intrigue for six or reaction. And yes, people make mistakes even at the final tables. So don't think you have to be perfect at all. Just come and have fun, build a cool deck. New players always welcome. This looks like an intrigue challenge here. Getting a copy of Ty went out of hand. Ouch. That's a card you want to see pulled on intrigue. Your challenge? So we got the wall triggered, no challenges obviously on the Lancer side. So Dominus the Nice Watch player, he's going to draw a card. Putting the Messenger Raven back into hand. And there we go, Confiscation. Now we see why he's kept Jack and Agar around. He's playing a plot, get rid of that Craven. Second call on the banners. So I think that's nice watch deck is used to having his opponent having way more characters on the board, not really eliminating them. So he's expecting to get more gold off those plots, but they're not really doing econ for them. Uh, but at least he's winning reserve off or winning initiative, sorry is what I want to say. And choosing who goes first. So we stuck James here with being first player again. Of course Jack is now ready to go. Doesn't have a milk or craven on him, but with the way James Luck is going in this game, I can see Philip having it in hand right now, and that's what one of those gold is going to be spent on, is just a slap of milk or a craven right down Jack and again. Even though there's dupes under all those characters, and, oh, well, except for the ghost under Cotter Pike and Eamon on the board, so those Valarmo Gulas tokens, it would take a lot more turns to actually get through those players and get them killed. And uh, James just keep, or sorry, Philip just keeps filling up his hand uh, with that Master Raven every turn. Just gets more characters to play, so he's gonna keep keep the onslaught coming. He's gonna be able to recover from any situation, I think. But uh, his economy plots aren't getting him too much gold here. That's that's the other thing. Pretty sure it's James going first here is deciding. He's looking at how much power his opponent needs. What's he at? It's seven on the plot or seven on the house card. And Cotter's got more than five for sure at this point. He's probably like one one or two away from winning. And still no power icons. Um, on the Night's Watch side, he doesn't care about power challenges. Just looking at winning intrigues and militaries, I guess. 
It's weird in a wall deck. You should should have more power icons, I think, but maybe it's just maybe his deck's not giving him what he wants. Oh, sure. That was not a very fun game. It's okay, it's just Lannister. Uh, alright. And you hear Roy in the background complaining about losing to a Lannister player. And uh, getting eliminated. <laughs> He's got a hate for Lannister decks. He's got a hate for players who play Lannister. We've heard it on the podcast, the White Book. Go listen to that. The, the most recent episode of this time of posting. Uh, he's uh, very, very negative and uh, just hating on the Lannister cards when they're reviewing the, uh, I believe, the Red Wedding chapter pack. Uh, but it's a good listen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Lannisters. You know you design the card game properly when the Lannisters uh, make people hate them in paper form, TV show form, and book form, you know, you know, you lined it up right when when the the game's designed to uh, and, and given that same feeling to players in the game. That's a that's a huge win, I think. <laughs> so yeah, James definitely on his last last legs here. Uh, he's, you know, l looking for a way to stay in this tournament here, not get eliminated, and wants to make it to the finals, but <laughs> game's been falling apart here. He's just been hanging in there. Any chance of a of an advantage he gets, it's just turned against him, and can't really do anything about it. When your opponent's able to trigger his reigns plot whenever he wants, and you're not, that's or reigns agenda. Sorry, his scheme plots from his reigns agenda is what I'm trying to say. Uh, yeah, it's not not good for you. Yeah, we got Gen Con coming up in, uh, what is it now, three or four weeks at this point? Four weeks? Three weeks. But I'm going. Decided to go after all. The card I was looking for, you were ready to go play Oh, yes, yes, yes. If you want to help support the trips to Gen Con in the future, uh, click that donation link in the link, or donation link in the description below. Uh, definitely, you guys are the reason, main reason I'm going. I wasn't going to go this year. Looking to save, save money. Uh, we got some goals here in life we're trying to achieve, so looking to save some funds, but uh, and miss out on Gen Con this year. But then, you know, the support from the videos and uh, yeah, just basically the YouTube channels and you guys watching these videos and the, if you guys are the guys who also watch the board game videos, much appreciated. So it's the all the tabletop content I'm doing here, but uh, that is a driving force behind me going to Gen Con. So I'm bringing my wife. We're bringing a bunch of cameras. We're going to try to cover Gen Con a little bit here. Try to get some videos that you guys might want to see. Cover some Thrones, maybe some L5R, the new LCG. Uh, you know, cover some Game of the Game of Thrones miniatures game by Cool Meaner and Not. Try to get a demo of that on film if we can. Maybe it's the uh, Game of Thrones uh, Catan game. I know you guys think I'm joking if you haven't seen it. I, I thought it was a joke at first. Then I had to check that it wasn't April 1st. And uh, that Fantasy Flight's Twitter account didn't post on the wrong date or something. But yeah, Game of Thrones, Settlers of Catan is a thing, and it's going to be at Gen Con in demo form. So maybe I'll get a video of a playthrough of that. And, you know, if you guys are obviously Game of Thrones fans, if you're here watching this video, maybe you'll be interested in that. So another reason for you to subscribe, to donate to the channel, to hit that like button, to leave comments below, share these videos, uh, help support the channel, helps motivate uh, me to make choices to keep going to Gen Cons and uh, try to get some coverage for you guys. And hopefully players are cool with playing on camera at the final table. And we'll have the Gen Con finals this year on the channel. Last year, it wasn't because a certain player didn't want to be filmed. Which is okay, that's your choice. Um, but yeah, it's a player who's been on camera many times. And just decided not to be on camera that day. And that, that kind of sucked. Didn't get to show the Gen Con final. So hopefully this year, dragging all the uh, camera equipment there. And all the funds, getting the hotels, the tickets, the parking, all that stuff, the gas. Hopefully it pays off and I can get some good videos for you guys and uh, come back with some good tournament videos for Game of Thrones. What is that? Even some good melee matches, some competitive melee we'll get on the channel. And we got Tyrion finally on the board, but there's that Craven. I knew the Craven was coming. Jon Snow was in hand. 
But yeah, I knew the Craven was coming. He's just been drawing way too many cards. He's definitely going to see that Craven and just deal with Jack, and I knew he was just sitting there waiting for it. And he's got Gilly out there. You hear James just realizing he's done. He's got nothing. And that's it. James is going to concede. That's that's the game. There's no way out of it there. Cotter Pike's just too much trouble. And with Cotter Pike getting a Noble Lineage right there, he's got a Power Icon also. Uh, yes, Tyrion has a stealth, but still, he could win. And uh, yeah. Thank you to everyone scrolling by on the screen right now. All you awesome. Those are all the awesome people that help bring you these videos. They're, every single one of them is donated on Patreon.com. And there's still current Patreons. You can get your name in those credits there and help support the channel, help support these videos. Click that link in the description below. Much appreciated to all you guys. Thank you so much for even just being here watching this video. Hit that like, comment, subscribe, like you see on the screen there. If you're going to tweet about it, use hashtag AGOTLCG. And like I said, many more videos coming up for Game of Thrones. I got some other tournaments, uh, some game night kit videos uh, ready to go. Those will be up on the channel shortly. Uh, finals coming up. Stick around, guys. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you in the next video.